um, very, very loosely structured roses. Uh, so today I am going to be painting them on a canvas that I've painted with uh, Folk Art Treasure Gold. And I'm going to be using Folk Art Pure Artist Pigments. And the Folk Art Pure Artist Pigments are a great line of paint that are formulated to be very, very thick. They're heavily pigmented and they allow you a full range of artistic uh, expression. You can thin them down uh, with water or one of our mediums so that you can do watercolor effects or you can use them full strength and very, at their very thickest for some impasto effects. And the Folk Art Pure Artist Pigments are available at platonline.com, amazon.com, and at Michael's. So that's where you can find your Pure Artist Pigments. And for brushes, I'm going to be using the Folk Art Select Firm Bristle Brushes, which have a much stiffer bristle than the traditional uh, Golden Taclon brushes that many artists use. And you can find the Folk Art Select Firm Bristle Brush 7-piece set at platonline.com forward slash let's paint. You can find it on amazon.com. And these are fabulous brushes, and I think you'll really enjoy using them. But let's get into painting some roses. So I've got a painting here that I did, and I just painted two roses on here. And I want you to look and see that we have the back part of the rose, we have the front part of the rose, and then we have some outside petals. We have the same thing here. We've got the back of the rose, the front of the rose, and then some outside petals. So that's all you need to really know about how to put a rose together. So on my canvas, I'm going to sketch out kind of an oval shape. All right, so I'm going to make a smaller oval inside there. So this is going to be the center of my rose where I've made that little X. We have the back of the rose up here. We have the bottom of the rose, and I'm not really doing anything around the outside edge. You'll see why when we start painting. So this is all you need as a guide uh, to help you keep uh, everything in place while you're painting the rose. So I'm going to start uh, with my darkest color on my rose, which is going to be the Folk Art Pure Artist Pigment, and the color is called Asphaltum. And this just looks like a dark brown when you put it on your palette, but in reality, it is a beautiful golden honey brown color. And so it is um, a transparent color and it does wonderful things in all sorts of different applications when you're painting. But for us, it's going to give us a great kind of transparent golden brown color. Now, I don't usually paint with very much water, which is uh, kind of goes against the grain of what a lot of acrylic artists use, but you don't need a lot of water. Before we actually start painting, I want to remind you of a phrase that will help set your mind at ease about any uh, worries you have about painting roses. And the phrase is, you get what you get and you don't pitch a fit. So just realize that some of this is just going to happen organically and you just need to relax and kind of go with it. And these roses are definitely unstructured. We're gonna come in for a little bit of a close up here. So I want you to see that there's nothing very structured about these flowers. So every petal is not painted. There are a few uh, key things that I'm going to point out to you, but most of this is just happenstance. We're gonna put what we hope is the right color of paint in the right spot, and that's how our painting is going to work out for us. So I'm gonna pick up a little bit of asphaltum on my brush, and I'm using a uh, number 12 brush not too big, not too small, but I don't want a lot of paint on my brush, so I'm working it out here on my palette, and I'm going to paint using just the corner of my brush. All right, I'm not laying the brush down flat like that to paint. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put the corner of my brush down, and I'm going to do a lot of scrubbing. So here's how to hold your brush. Put the handle of the brush in the palm of your hand, and then grip the brush like so. Holding your brush this way will make your painting have a much more painterly quality and be much less finely rendered. So let's start right here where our rose is going to be the darkest, right here in the center of our flower. So I'm going to put the corner of the brush down and I'm going to tap and kind of pat some dark color into the center of the rose. 
just pat it on and then I'm taking the corner of my brush and I'm just giving a little bit of a scrub putting some color up into the flower let's take a look at that and you can see it's not anything that's terribly planned out all I know is that this is going to be the darkest part of the rose and that's really the interior of the flower now I'm going to put a little bit of the same dark color right here at the bottom of my flower let's move that in for a close-up so you could see I've got just a little bit of that on there not too much And then I'm going to just fluff this out a little bit, stretching that color out. And that is going to be the bottom of my rose and also some color underneath what I'm going to call my outside filler petals of the rose. So nothing difficult so far. You have to have some courage of your convictions and the willingness just to put this on there let it go and trust that it's going to turn out to look good when you are finished. So on my palette, I'm putting out a couple of other colors of my Folk Art Pure Artist Pigment Acrylics. I have just put out Yellow Ochre, which is a beautiful straw colored uh, acrylic paint. And I'm also going to put out Yellow Light, which is a beautifully bright, happy yellow. And I think I'll go ahead and put out some Titanium White right now so I can have all of my um, most used rose flower colors out. Now, I've not cleaned my brush in water, but what I am going to do is I'm going to wipe it thoroughly on my blue shop towel. So I lay my brush down and I'll fold my shop towel over the brush and pull the brush through the shop towel to take the excess paint off the brush. I do it this way so that it pinches and grooms the brush back together so that I always have my brush in primo condition, ready to paint. It's nicely groomed back to a nice chisel edge if I need that. All right, so let's pick up a little bit of yellow ochre and a little bit of yellow light together on our brush. And I'm just brush mixing between these two colors. And I'm going to show you that we are going to create um, basically a ring around um, the center portion of our rose. So I'm going to start along the upper back portion of the flower. So again, using the corner of my brush, I'm tapping this down and very loosely kind of fluffing some of this golden color on. So let me bring that up for a close-up so you could see. There we go. You could see where that uh, looks what that looks like. I will try to paint up here for just a minute so you can see a little bit more of what I'm doing. And the important thing is as I come around, I'm going to tap the brush and you can see this starting to form the front part of the rose. So again, it is yellow ochre and yellow light on my brush. I'll do the same thing over here on this side, fluffing a little bit of this color on and then bringing it down now, I'm going to come across the front of the rose, and I'm going to set the brush down, put a stroke on. I'll move here to the front, put another stroke on. And I come over here, and this time, instead of putting a stroke like this, I'm going to lay my brush down to the side and put a big stroke on there. And I'll pick up a little bit more yellow light, and I'll make another stroke right up there. All right. So that didn't show up very well, so let's try that again. There we go. Okay, so what I really want you to pay attention to is the fact that we have now created this circle around the dark portion of our rose. And I can't resist playing in this, so I'm going to basically lay my brush down kind of parallel to the surface of the canvas, and I'm going to drag a little bit of this yellow color that's on my brush onto the flower. So very loose, not, not uh, specific petals, not in any, not numbering them, not doing any of that stuff. We've created a circle. 
end, I'm going to continue with my brush mix of yellow ochre and yellow light. I'm going to put a little bit right here in the front of the rose. I'll do another little stroke over here. And I'll pull a little bit down this way and stretch that up. And I want you to think about a beautiful, fluffy rose. I don't want you to try to be thinking about specific petals or the shape of any one petal or whether it's too light or too dark. I mean, that's not, the, the, now is not the time for that. So we have more petals to put on around here. So let's just make sure that the front of our rose has a nice bit of depth to it. it. I mean, a little bit of height, so it's not so narrow. And then we'll simply start out here and I'll pat on a little bit of a petal over here and we'll pat on one over there. And we will come down here to the front of the rose where it's gonna be widest at the bottom. And I'm just touching on and pulling some color up and letting it hang out a little bit. So this is what we have so far. And it doesn't look like much, but it does have the general shape of a flower. And as I'm looking at it, I wanna make sure that I've got just a little color here and there kind of filling in some of the gaps. So I'm simply patting some of this color on kind of giving the rose a little bit of a spanking. All right, so this is good enough for the underneath uh, or the first layer of our flower. I am looking at this on the monitor here so I can see what I'm doing. And I want to bring a little color down further into the center of the rose. So not very much paint on my brush. And I'm going to lay the brush down and just kind of tap a little bit of this yellow on. And you can see that I just put a little bit of a fluff of color down in there. So not too much going on here, not too uh, fancy, not too structured, very, very loosely structured flower. I'm going to wipe my brush off and I'm going to pick up some yellow light and I'm still mixing kind of in the same little puddle here. So if it's got a little yellow ochre in there too, that's fine, nothing to worry about because remember, you get what you get and you don't pitch a fit. So I'm picking up a little bit of titanium white and just brush mixing this in to lighten my color up a little bit. And brush mixing is easy to do. You just mix your colors right on your palette and you see exactly what you're getting. So now we're going to start putting on kind of the fun uh, part of this, some of the lighter colored petals. And there's not a set rule to this. So again, I'm gonna start on the corner of my brush, holding my brush as far back on the handle as I can, and touch and tap. And you see that some petals are just falling off of the brush as I'm tapping and patting this on. I'm not trying to be fussy about shape of strokes or any of that sort of stuff. I just want to a layer of lighter color on and I'm going to let some of that trail down into the flower a little bit. Not as far as I did the other and not covering up my dark but just bringing some down in there. If you look at this kind of finished painting you can see that the interior parts of these roses are pretty dark and you have to have that dark light contrast or your painting will not be attractive. All right so remember that circle that we started. So I'm putting some of this light color on here and effectively we are going to recreate our circle. And some of these angles are fine. Uh, your roses are not as perfectly round and fluffy and soft as you would imagine they are. Every rose is not a hallmark card. When you look at a rose and it starts to open, some of the petals fold back on themselves and they form sharp points and uh, severe angles and things as the flower opens. So they can be a little bit harsh around the edge. So again, picking up my yellow light and titanium white on my brush and we're just kind of spanking 
these petals on the rose. I'm going to make this a little bit brighter here in the front because that part is kind of bulging toward us. So a little bit more paint, a little bit more white on my brush, and there's a big, bold stroke of white and yellow. And I'll do another one up that way. And I'll make a small one, just kind of, well, you would imagine that you kind of see the edge of the petal, or you might see a little bit of a point on a petal. So that's done right there. And people think, oh, you paint roses so beautifully, and it's like, I'm just putting dabs of color on a flower. And anybody can do this. It's not rocket science. You have to convince yourself that you are going to paint beautiful dabs on your flower and that those dabs are going to be enough. A friend of mine who is a very, very fine artist, and I admire her work tremendously, has said to me, she goes, don't paint the dog, I mean, paint the dog, don't paint the fleas. When I start to get bogged down in trying to make something look a certain way or to do something specifically, she's like, paint the dog, don't paint the fleas. So that's what I want you all to do. Just put some color on and let that be enough. Those few little dabs that I just put on there, that's a fine rose petal. And the thing is, when someone looks at your painting, they're going to know it's a rose or at least a flower, and you don't have to paint anything else to explain that to them. So I'm going to put a petal right across the front here. So dab, dab, lay the brush down, big dab, smaller dab, smaller dab. And that's a five dab of paint that made that uh, petal there. Super easy. We're not... Um, Oh, that's a little bit more than I wanted to put on there. I had too much paint on my brush. But you get what you get. You don't pitch a fit. So I'm going to wipe my brush off and just touch my brush back in this paint. And I'm going to stretch that white out a little bit. And I'll pick up some more and we'll do another kind of... Well, that's too much paint on my brush and I need to pay attention to that so I don't mess things up. These few bits of lighter color that go here, mainly in the front of the rose, really just kind of push that part of the flower uh, to the forefront. And we can add a little bit up here, right around that opening. And then remember to vary your brush marks. So have some taps on the corner. You can put a little bit of an angled uh, stroke up there. But you want to have some variety so that we've got some dabs and some dashes and some bigger uh, areas of solid color, some fluffier areas. You want to have variety in what you're doing so that whoever's looking at your painting doesn't get bored of it quickly. They want to keep looking at it and see um, what those interesting little marks and things are. So we now need something to help um, catch your eye. So we need what I like to call a little bit of a rogue color. So you could use um, orange, I'm going to put a little bit of red out here. And these are not colors that are in the flower, but they can really make a fabulous accent. So I'm going to start with a little Folk Art Pure Artist pigment, and the color is pure orange. And I've wiped my brush out, and I'm picking up the pure orange. And I'm going to just dab some of this on in the center of the rose. Just like that, just a couple of dabs. And I'm going to wipe the orange out, pick up some red light. And I'm going to put a brighter accent of the red light in the center of the rose. Just touch it on there, just like that. And I'm going to leave that alone. I'm not going to blend it in. I'm not going to soften it. I promise you I'm not going to mess with it any more than that. So that is how you paint a very unstructured rose. So let's give our rose a little leaf to go along with it. I'm going to put out some sap green on my palette. And sap green is a beautiful, dark, uh, transparent yellow green color. And also for fun, I'll put out a little uh, dioxazine purple, which is the complementary color to yellow. So it's nice to add a complement 
to our painting to give a little bit of a contrast. This will also help dull and darken our green color. All right, I'm going to wipe my brush out, the same brush I've been using, haven't put it in any water yet. Don't intend to put it into water until absolutely necessary. Pick up a little bit of sap green on my brush and I'm going to brush mix in a little bit of dioxazine purple to make this color a little bit darker. Again, not too much paint on my brush. I probably use much less paint than people think I do. But we're going to paint a little rose leaf right over in this area here. So I'm going to, again, hold my brush, put the, hand, the tip of the handle in the palm of my hand, grasp the brush loosely, and I'm going to very loosely just kind of sketch right around the outside edge of my rose. So you can see that I've carefully put that dark color on there. And I'm saying that in a joking manner. So then I'm going to scuff and scrub a little bit of this color on and loosely forming kind of a triangular shape. Again, we're painting the dog, not painting the fleas, so this is plenty for somebody to understand that we are painting a leaf on here. I'm adding a little bit more dark, just patting this color on, and there's not much paint on my brush, so when I give you the super close-up, you can see that you could see through it a little bit. So again, not much paint on the surface, and now let's highlight this leaf a little bit. I'm going to wipe that dark green color, which was sap green and a little dioxazine purple out of my brush. I'm going to pick up some yellow light and I'm going to add some of this sap green into my yellow light, creating a lighter green color. I don't want this to be too bright. We're going to add some more highlights on top of this. So this is going to be a medium green color here. And again, you don't want much paint on your brush. It doesn't take a lot of paint. But I'm going to indicate the center uh, vein of the leaf. I'm going to begin to tap the chisel edge of my brush on the leaf. And you can see a couple of little taps and we have the center vein line right on the leaf just like that. And I'm going to lay the brush down, again, not much paint on the brush, lay the brush down very parallel to the surface of the canvas and pull a little bit of this lighter green off to one side and kind of tap and spank the canvas a little bit to release some of that light green. You could see it's just kind of tapped on there. I've not worked to blend it or soften it in in any way. And now on the other side of the leaf, I'm not painting right next to the center vein. I'm going to paint a little bit, uh, a little bit on the outside edge of the leaf. So you could see how I've highlighted out on the other side of the leaf. And now we've got this great kind of shading going on on the leaf uh, around the rose and then on one side of the center vein line. Super easy, not complex, don't overthink it and don't overwork it. I'll wipe the color off of my brush and I'll pick up a little bit of titanium white and I'll add that here to this area of my puddle of paint on the palette where I've been brush mixing. So by brush mixing, I can really see exactly what colors I've been using on my painting. Again, not much paint on the brush. And I'm going to just kind of tap a little bit of this extra highlight on right over the center vein area. So just kind of touch this on, pull a little bit. Let's tickle that out. Not much pressure on the brush the smallest amount of uh, pressure and I can add a little bit of light over on this side of the leaf. All right, very little paint, very little pressure. And you get a very attractive leaf with minimal amount of effort. So I hope this has helped you do um, uh, 
to give you a little bit better idea about how to paint an unstructured rose. You can do it very simply and easily. You can change your colors. I did a gold rose, a yellow rose on a gold background. You could do, um, you could do a pink rose on a rose gold background. The folk art uh, treasure gold uh, in the rose gold color would be a beautiful background uh, on a canvas. And then use a little um, alizarin crimson to stroke on your darkest color on your rose. And then you could use alizarin crimson plus a little bit of titanium white to create some pinks. If they're too bubblegum pinky, you could add a little bit of red light in there and that would be your medium color and then add a little bit more white for your lighter colors. So you could of course do pink roses that way. So I hope you've enjoyed this and we will be back again to teach you another special technique uh, here on the Plaid Crafts YouTube channel. So thanks for